definition of insanity is making the same mistakes over and over and over again, expecting different results. So, by default of that definition, I am insane. <laughs> but I'm also very stubborn. So I will bite the bullet, take full responsibility, and appreciate the fact that you're going to be watching this video, that you've clicked on it. Thank you so very much. This is Bubba. She is a no ID foul. That is very special to my heart because it was one that my daughter picked out and that I have been trying to grow successfully in my preferred method of self-watering and LECA. And this is the third one of her that I've been trying to do that with. Clearly, it hasn't worked because as you can see, she is struggling and languishing and now she is coming out of her pot. I think I have one root to work with back in the pot there. I thought she was doing really well. I let her bloom because it's been yonks since I've seen the blooms, but they're coming off today because I'm going to try and rescue her. So we'll enjoy the blooms in some water for a little bit of time and then we'll see what happens. I'm going to take that away. It's a bit windy today. So then the next question of course is why do you keep doing this? Why don't you just go to bark and get it over and done with? Well yeah I'm stubborn and I need in certain circumstances the orchids to grow the way I want them to. Eventually hoping that they will adapt and I have many 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 complex fowls now that are doing exactly that. They have adapted to the self-watering and lecker. And my head says, why not this one? And what I'm going to do here, I have others as well to address today, but we're going to start with Bubba because she's a classic case of what goes wrong in my environment and with my setup. And the fact is I cannot get the ratio of the LECA in the pot with aeration and enough roots to grow without drying off at the base. You can see here, I have had a lot of attempted roots and they've all dried off at the base. And that's why I made myself this little doohickey here to cover the base and encourage roots to grow, allowing airflow. In the meantime that I have done that, she started to grow out of the pot because of the weight of the spike. So she was coming out. And in my opinion, I'm just going to take care of her the way I think maybe it will work. And if it doesn't, then that will be it with the experiment of Baba in self-watering and LECA. Having a closer look now, look at this. She's already under attack from scale. That is not good, not good at all. This root is somewhat viable in the pot, but it's already damaged and snapped here at the base. So I'm gonna be very careful about that. But I'm gonna see if I can keep her free of the scale because the next thing is if the scale comes that's it it's history for sure not just because of what i've done or tried to achieve here but i stand no chance against scale with phalaenopsis i have lost a few last year in 2020 relatively quickly and in my to my understanding out of the blue Whereas nothing is out of the blue. It's just, can you see the blighters or can't you? And in my case, I didn't see them until it was far too late. The damage was done. So yeah, it's a windy day. It's not a good day to be doing this. I hope I can protect the mic, but I can assure you that having seen the scale now, I'm glad I didn't wait another day or two because that's the margin here, a day or two. There we go. I'm going to spray her with my garlic alcohol, seeing as it's a breezy day and take advantage of the situation. The fact that it's breezy, 
I'm going all in. But I do have to make sure that I don't desiccate the roots. That's the thing with alcohol. It's one thing that it'll take care of the pests, but it also is a desiccating agent for roots. Every year, fowls challenge me. And this one, especially this Piketty white one, which I love, has been a very, very difficult one for me to actually make happy, being number three. And I thought, third time lucky, look, it's doing well. Well, here we go. It is not doing well anymore. Right. What I'm going to do now is clean out the pot, get the lecker out of the way, get fresh lecker, and then we'll set her up again fresh, but with a little bit of a difference, and we'll see if that works. But first I have to remove the alcohol from the roots. And I'm not cutting the stem, because I would like it to help me to anchor, if I can possibly achieve that. Okay, I have just rinsed out the pot, seeing as I'm gonna use the same one. And I am going to put back in two microfibers at the base, and I am going to try and see if I can rescue this fowl, and anybody who's new to my channel, please understand that I have a personal, let's say, challenge going on about being able to grow complex hybrid phalaenopsis successfully in LECA and self-watering. I have transitioned one last year successfully, no issues whatsoever, jumped in, took off, and is in bud right now. And then there are candidates that I am constantly struggling with, and I refuse to change my setup method. So that's on me. I have come to terms with the fact that maybe some aren't conducive to this setup, but those will then filter themselves out of my collection. And I've come to terms with that. I've made peace with it. I'm not changing anything to accommodate the orchid in such a way that I save the orchid for the sake of changing my setup, if that makes sense. I'm hoping one day to be employed again and won't have time as much as I do now. So my setup is all a plan in order to make my orchid hobby much easier to maintain and the orchids won't suffer if I'm not around for eight to 10 hours a day. That is why. So I'm not complaining. I'm not frustrated anymore. Last year I was frustrated, 2019 I was frustrated, but not anymore. So my setup, there's a reason, there's method to my madness, insanity, we'll go back to that again. That is why I am continuing and I am insisting. And those that will survive, happy days, those that don't, after three years, well, I'm sorry to say it, it'll be a happy memory. But back to what I'm going to do here. I put my loops in, but what I'm going to do is fill up the lecker only like to the top. And if I can, maybe drop her in a little further even so that the, her leaves do the supporting for me and I don't have to put a stake in. That's the idea. So we're going to try that out. And if that doesn't work, then we'll try putting a stake in and tying her to it. But if the leaves, if she's more in the center and the leaves do the supporting, then I should be okay. Now it looks like she's going to be very low in the pot, but what I'm going to try and achieve is only fill the lecker to the base of her stem. So I'm not filling her up to the brim of the pot. I'm going to keep her lower to increase the humidity around the base because clearly that is where roots were failing. But I'm going to fill up enough lecker to cover the one root that I do have to work with. First of all, we'll need some cinnamon. Then we can fill her up and move on to the next one, which I got as a gift. And that is a totally different story with regards to me wanting to make sure that that orchid survives. She comes from the orchid room. But if not, again, then my mantra at the moment is no more foul gifts from anybody. Please, there's too much responsibility there. Okay, so I'm going to, 
get some lecker and keep her pushed down low. All right, let's have a look-see. So that's the plan. Just low enough in the pot to maintain humidity, see if any more roots will grow, and stabling her with her leaves as support. And she has been treated for scale. And now we wait whether Bubba will make a comeback. If she is as stubborn as I am, then we will get along. So here's a different candidate, Ninja Yellow, from the orchid room. A gift. Can you imagine now the stress? I have seen this orchid develop in her climate, her environment, her setup and her care. And I am not getting the same results, even though I believe we kind of grow the same way. But you see, there is a difference. No matter if you have the same setup, your environment might not actually be suitable for what others do. This is a classic example. Now, I'm not as rigorous about Ninja Yellow with regards to losing her or being at peace with that as I am with Baba because this was a gift and this makes me nervous. Now, I have a beautiful root growing in there, but she is not happy and she is not pot bound since she has arrived in my collection. Let me see. July. So she arrived at the right time, but clearly not happy. And she keeps wanting to bloom. This is the third spike she's trying to push out in the time that she's been with me. I let her bloom once. She tried again and I'm not having it. She is not ready. So she's trying to bloom again. And this is stress, clear stress. This is not a happy orchid that just wants to bloom and bloom and bloom. She's fighting for survival. There's a difference. So this, that's why I'm taking the spike off again. Not easy, but I've gotten used to it. So it comes easier than probably for others who are trying to do the right thing for their orchids, but hate cutting spikes off. But I've done this so often now, it's almost like, okay, there goes another spike, hoping to make sure that the orchid will stay happy long-term. And the plan to do, what, to, what I want to do with her is bring her upright so that this root is already in the media, despite the fact that I have another root coming out here, which is going across the top of the pot. I can guarantee one root in the pot. That's the one I'm focusing on. And hopefully, eventually, the other one will follow suit. But in the meantime, as the temperatures are warming, I need that root in the pot. So that is what I'm going to do. Right, she is wobbly on the top, but pretty, pretty active at the bottom. Oh, there's hope. I'm glad I did have a look, but now I'm a little annoyed as well. I mean, you have to have a look if you're unsure. But now that it's looking like this in here, I'm like, oh, wow, dang. That would have been okay. But a checkup, nonetheless, no harm, no foul. Mind the root there. Let's see that she's okay regarding scale. We can get rid of that vellum in there. Give her a nice hose down with the sprayer. Well, this gives me hope, you guys. And I don't mind that I cut that spike off. I absolutely do not mind. It's going to give her much more energy for a longer period of time exert to do the root business here. We have a kink, but it's actively growing at the bottom. Right, this gives me a lot more hope. So what I'm going to do is work away on the sheaths just to make sure that I don't miss anything going on underneath, keeping an eye on the root that I was wanting in the first place. Fouls, fouls, fouls. 
and then I can also say Nina, Nina, Nina. But I'm going to stay the course. I know that fowls can do well. I have fowls doing well, and that's it. This is how it's going to be done. I've already got some orchids now that I'm making exceptions for because I was over fertilizing them and I was doing too much lovings on them. But in this case with fowls, nope. Y'all are all gonna be in the same category, same boat. I know you can do it. So it's a battle of who wins out and I hope that with the candidates I'm dealing with today, that we all come out as winners. So that takes care of the stem. Clean that up a bit more. We're just gonna spray that stem down a little bit. I don't wanna dirty the lecker because the lecker is clean. I can reuse that. I don't have to mess with this one. Now I'm not going to spray the base on Ninja Yellow with the alcohol infused garlic because there was no scale, but maybe as a repellent, it's not such a bad idea to give a little bit of a spray on the underneath. Now let's see that we can repot her. Okay, that microfiber is stuck to the roots. Can I get it off? without any damage, surely. Yeah, thank you. She is a thirsty one. But again, yes, this is a classic example of the orchid room also grows Lekka semi-hydro. She adds a lot of other components, but to my understanding, when it comes to this fowl, when, I, when it arrived, it was just in Lekka. So it should be an easy transition and off she goes and off she grows, right? Nope. Environment plays a huge factor. It's easier to have her in the setup that I also use, but it doesn't make it a guarantee. Now I may need a stake for her, just to train her the way I would like to see her grow. But let me see first if that is absolutely necessary. Yes, we are going to make and apply a steak. Not the yummy kind that is to be eaten and enjoyed, but a foul steak. My primitive method of waterproofing my steak is to wrap it in sellotape, just at the base where the steak would be in the pot and water and wet environment. This way I don't have to worry about rotting the steak, mold, fungus, and all that stuff. Right, let's have a look-see if this is going to be a one and done situation. She has been interfered with now for the second time since potting her up and coming into my collection. One was potting her up and the next was a checkup. This is the third time I'm interfering with her and I think she's probably kind of like fed up now. Understandable. Don't hold it against her. Let's give her a little bit of a twist. Let's see if she will stay better. But I need her up against that stake. So, another twist. Mind the roots. There we go. I just saw a dead one in there that I missed. So we'll get that out while we can. And goodbye. There we go. That's how I want her. And I'm going to fill up with smaller leka at the bottom because I also now need my third hand and I use leka to position an orchid in the right location before being able to then use both my hands and let her go. All right, before I get that root tip touching the lecker in the pot and doing the risky business of abrasion, I'm gonna get some security around her. It 
It's actually quite interesting weather today. I'm going in between sunshine and drizzle rain. <laughs> but it's okay. I think that my electronics will be fine. It's perfect for the angrecoids. <laughs> right. Stay on subject here, Nina. This is the season for several of my fowls that I thought were established and are throwing a fit again, telling me who's boss and that I should change my setup. But once again, I am not going to do that. I'm not changing my setup. Long term, I think I know what I'm doing. I'm thinking positively about getting employed. So this has got to work. We'll just fill up with the lecker that was in before, which is a lot larger. That's fine. But the crevices and in between the roots in the pot are filled up. So they're all snug in the environment that they were comfortable with. I'm much happier knowing that that root is going to go into the media as opposed to searching for it. Also, I'm more comfortable knowing that I have some good roots in the pot and she was just wobbly at the top. And thirdly, I'm much more comfortable now knowing that I have secured her with a stake, which I didn't do before because I didn't think there was a need, but clearly there was. So now she can just settle in. Let's give her some cinnamon. Mindful of the roots. And I am left with one more candidate for the day because that was on the schedule. It's a little one, a precious little one that I wouldn't want to lose. So we we'll address that one right after this one. Let's have a look, see what's going on there. And for little one, the sun is back. This is my little Vega Cecilia. Clearly not the real name, but it is my little mini fell that reminds me of that beautiful Spanish wine from the Ribera del Duero region, and it's called Vega Cecilia. This one hasn't been doing too badly. I let it bloom last year, but this is the one where I'm thinking maybe one year I'll let them bloom, one year I'll let them recover. So this is the candidate that this year is going to recover because as you can see, it is now growing nice roots, but there's a problem as well. It's not as happy as I would like it to be. So it's coming out. We're gonna check that root system. That spike is coming off. Because yes, look. Woo, rejuvenation time. And we have some debris going on in the pot. Just make sure that I don't get ahead of myself and cut something off too fast. Just make sure, just take the time. It might drizzle a little bit. Don't stress because of the weather. Think of what you're doing. I don't want to be rushed simply because I'm thinking, oh my goodness, it might drizzle a bit. It's just concerning for the equipment, but it's not that big of a deal at this point in time. So while it's not a big deal, stop focusing on it. Just giving a the stem another little bit of a shower, clean up. That's a dead root. I'm only peeling the vellum off where possible. I don't mind these scrangy roots here. I have enough inorganic media in the pot. I'm not concerned about rot. There's enough flushing also going on. So all that doesn't worry me so much. But it is strange how it was doing well last year. I let it bloom. And then promptly this year, it's not having such a great time. So I won't let it bloom. And if I can give my fells that kind of a rota, one year you're in bloom and the next year the others are in bloom, that's good. That's fine. At least I get some fells to bloom and others can have a rest. Now I want that, there we go. I wanted that off as a marker because if more deteriorates, then I want to be able to see it instead of guessing. 
There's a bit of scale, I think. It could be debris, but it could be scale as well, right there. So we'll have to address that carefully. I'm hopeful about this one because of all the nice roots that are growing. And so I'm a little bit careful to not rush this process of cleaning the base simply because I'm concerned about a few raindrops. There we go, a little bit of garlic alcohol doesn't hurt. Make sure that the roots did not get any of it off. Let's take care of that a bit more. And I hope it will be a rewarding result. Yep, there is a little critter. Look at that. You little blighter. Stay off my fowls. Everybody's gonna get a checkup. Oh, you are kidding me. You are kidding me. Look what's in here. That is uh, a shocker. I hate them. I hate them. Sorry. That makes me angry. You're sneaking into my orchids like that. How how dare you? How dare you? Get out. Dang. Check out all these little crawlers. See all that white? Yep, they were ready to rock and roll. They were ripe to come out. Ooh. Never mind waiting. Everybody's going to get a once over. Don't worry, not in this video. But that is just so annoying, I tell you. Gosh, I hope I got it on time. Flippin' heck. They did that to my unicorn last year. There's plenty of good vegetation outdoors where you can help yourself. Get off my orchids, for real. Gosh, that makes me angry, I'm sorry. Dang. All right, I'm gonna let that dry out. I'm gonna rinse out my pot. I'm not reusing that lecker for this one because of that clear and evident scale. I'll be right back. What I'm going to do with this one, the same as I did with Bubba, I intend to keep it lower in the pot to increase the humidity around the base and use the leaves as a structure for its balance and support. Let's have a look-see before I pour Lekka in. Yeah, you'll be... No, we're going to do it like this and then pour Lekka in. Let me see if I can do this on camera. I want to protect the root. Keep it in focus. And put cinnamon on the spike. How about that? That's it. Now, keep you nicely situated comme ça. Small roots, small lecker. I have the luxury this year. Last year, I was picking out Lekka to match the size of the roots. This year, due to my unfortunate purchase of dirty Lekka, I had a lot of picking to do and sorting to do. Turns out I have a lot of small Lekka, so woohoo, some benefits here. Now there is an issue that I really want to address here because that is part and parcel of this whole repot and cleanup, thank Goodness, I wanted to address this because I could have said, nah, it'll be fine with a microfiber. 
Even though I don't want the base buried, I want the new roots to be straight in the media. So that's what I'm looking into right now. See those new roots? I don't mind about the strands, but the new roots there, straight into the media. No more microfiber stuff and hope it'll be okay. So it's a fiddle. It's an individual bead by bead little operation, but at least I think it's gonna be effective. This little guy is being stubborn. This little guy needs to be covered up. This little guy, oh dear, that root tip doesn't look too good. It might extend, it's trying. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt and put some Lekka on there as well. Right, so that is my three candidates for today. There are probably others around the corner, but for now, these were the ones that I really, really needed to address. Sasahibi. Stay down. Okay. And I appreciate you so very, very much if you stayed all the way to the end. If you have any kind of questions and judgment regarding my stubborn approach to how I want to grow my fowls, then my goodness, let's talk. I am not going to have a problem with any, any opposing opinions at all. It also gives me the opportunity to check my head whether I really, really want to continue down this path just because I'm a stubborn Capricorn. So let's talk. If you think what I'm doing is just a waste of time, I won't hold it against you because more often than not, I would say I fully agree. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your company. It gave me something to talk about and talk to. Have yourselves a wonderful day and please, please stay safe. Take care. Bye.